Sí. Hello. Um, hmm. Oh, cool. Uh, okay, so my name is Konstante Kalitski, and I'm a co founder of uh, Think Trunk. Um, yeah, I, I used to work in academia, and that's basically my story is basically the story of all co founders in the company because there's uh, three of us, and we all uh, started as uh, academic teachers and teaching, making games, I guess, uh, in general. Um, after that, we worked, uh, we made games for a casual market, which um, some of you may be familiar with. It's, uh, it's uh, completely, it's not like casual games on Steam or hyper casual games. It used to be a completely different ecosystem of uh, games uh, targeting women after 50. And uh, it's, yeah, we had some success there. And after, uh, few years uh, of creating such games, we decided it is time to move on because the market was uh, getting very crowded and uh, it, well, there were some telltale signs that it will implode soon. Uh, it is imploding right now. So uh, we decided to move to um, maybe not exactly hardcore PC gaming, but uh, to carve a niche for ourselves uh, in, uh, in uh, core PC mainstream gaming. So, uh, what we did we, is we closed our companies, we created Think Trunk, and we decided to create a Return to Game series. And the first installment in uh, said series is, uh, was, is called uh, Book of Demons, and uh, it was uh, it entered early access, launched in early access in um, I think it was this December uh, 2016, and uh, released for real uh, um, in December. Uh, 2018, after two years in early access. Yeah, and uh, it did very, very well. Uh, we uh, we got a bunch of awards, uh, our style included, and um, so I guess that's that's why I'm here. Um, but to, and I will be talking about how we created our style for uh, for the series. Mm, but well. To, for this to make any sense, I have to st uh, open with what uh, Return to Games really is. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, I have uh, my notes, uh, and I have to switch them manually, so it would be weird. Mm, the idea behind Return to Games series is to uh, create a series of seven games, well, maybe seven games, it's eight right now, uh, but uh, initially it was, uh, it was a seri uh, series of seven games. Uh, each, uh, of, uh, each of them would be a tribute to a different genre and uh, different uh, games we played back in the 90s, uh, back in the, what we consider a golden decade of uh, PC gaming, when uh, everything was fresh and uh, new genres were uh, uh, Created and um, and all our games would be crossover games, uh, which is a fancy term for a midcore game. Um, and for those of you who don't know what midcore is, it's um, these are games for both casual and hardcore gamers. Like there is an overlap in a target group. And uh, think Plants vs Zombies, World of Goo. Uh, Puzzle Quest, Little Inferno, games uh, that are not, uh, you know, you are not ashamed to play them as uh, if you are uh, some 14 year old kid and uh, if you are his mother you can still play them because there is something for you in there as well. Uh, so it's a very specific genre and, uh, and um, it's, it's a bit tricky to create games like that. It's, it takes a lot of more effort than just targeting a very specific narrow group. <clears throat> And the first issue we, uh, when we started uh, working on uh, on the series back in uh, 2012, so as if you can do math quickly in your head, you can see that it took us six years to actually deliver the first game. It took this long because we uh, we started with. Um, well, we wanted to create uh, design tools for designing our games because uh, what we aimed to do uh, was to uh, create games that would uh, recapture the, uh, the experiences we had back when we played the game back in the, in the 90s, but we would switch all the mechanics and use modern ones instead. So uh, not just a cheap uh, retro feel, uh, we are aiming for uh, something, something way, way bigger. And, um, and the first issue 
we had uh, after we uh, designed our uh, our tools for uh, for actually creating mechanics was uh, visual identification of our products. <clears throat> All right. Uh, because when we are talking uh, about game series in a classical sense, mm, it's, it's much easier. We can uh, not only rely on uh, general style, but uh, on shapes of the objects, uh, sound, um, uh, color scheme, uh, schemes, and such. Uh, for take uh, StarCraft One and StarCraft Two, for example, uh, at a glance you are you are able to say uh, to tell that well, it's pretty much the same game. Uh, there was a huge technological leap between the uh, first one and the second one, but uh, it's, 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 it would be difficult to mistake them for uh, something else, not StarCraft, right? The base is the same, uh, the crystals are the same, uh, Vespin gazers are the same. Yeah, there, there is one uh, on the left. So. <clears throat> The, the no, StarCraft 2 is definitely higher, higher definition and looks nicer, but uh, uh, but yeah, it's uh, it's very easy to easy to identify them as part of uh, of a series. Uh, however, uh, it's easier uh, because it's uh, it's the same genre. Uh, could they, could Blizzard create a point and click game or a shooter in that universe that would be as easy identifiable as uh, uh, RTS? Tough to say. I don't think so. Uh, I, I'm sure they could back then, <clears throat> but uh, I'm not so sure uh, they could right now. So we started by uh, we had to start somewhere. So we started with the basics: target group and platforms. Um, as you can see, uh, that wasn't much help because we wanted to cast our nets wide, and uh, we since we were going for crossover, we wanted to target both kids, adults, casual, hardcore, pretty much everyone. And um, so no help here. Uh, we couldn't just use uh, cartoons for kids or uh, more gore for adults. Uh, and uh, platforms didn't narrow it either because um, uh, one thing about our target group, which, well, my target group that's not on the slide is uh, post-hardcore game gamers, uh, people who used to play games a lot and now they don't have time to play games. And they, uh, sometimes are still on Steam and still on PC, but mostly they moved on to, uh, to mobile market. And uh, because of that, we didn't, uh, we didn't actually um, uh, exclude mobile. Who knows, maybe the, game, uh, the games will end up on phones or tablets, as uh, eventually Book of Demons did. Uh, so we, um, we knew that style should be readable. Uh, that's like, we fall back to our to stuff we learned in casual market. So everything should be easy to re easy to read, and uh, shapes should be uh, shapes of objects should be recognizable when uh, and distinguishable when uh, observed from various angles and directions. Not too much detail uh, since uh, well since mobile and maybe uh, maybe consoles. So uh, we had no idea how big the screen would be. Uh, we knew that we didn't want to go for uh, more flash-like graphics and uh, you know flat shading and stuff like that because um, players tend to. Uh, it's something we learned from casual market. Players tend to um, group um, uh, such games as kid games, and uh, it doesn't convey high quality. And we aim to uh, to convey high quality. Um, we knew that uh, we generally should keep our stuff uh, light and not dark because, you know, as you age, uh, eyes uh, admit less and less uh, sunlight and uh, you generally uh, can see well in the dark, uh, which uh, again is not something that people consider when creating art styles or visuals for game because most of uh, mo most players are very young. But we came from the market where, uh, you know, like 75 year old player was, uh, was not actually um, so we had the, the, this broad set of uh, prequisitives but we still didn't have uh, uh, we still didn't have an uh, actual art, art style uh, we also knew that we would like to have a layer of abstraction in our uh, style uh, so we could um, so we could have blood and gore that was before uh, like China opened up and uh, and uh, we just didn't want uh, 
very explicit blood because, you know, kids. And also uh, we knew that older gamers don't appreciate, not always appreciate uh, explicit gore in, um, in their games. Um, which was tricky because at one, on, one, on one hand we didn't want cartoon and on, one, on the other we didn't want any, everything to be very explicit. And uh, we knew our limitations. Uh, one of them was technology. We were working in our own homegrown engine, and, um, which was uh, 2D. And uh, our budget, we had limited budget. It was not very small budget because we had some success, previous success in casual field. So uh, uh, even self-funded, we had, we had money to do stuff and to work for, uh, for a couple of years. Um, but still, uh, it was not unlimited. <clears throat> so we had to plan a production pipeline that would allow us to uh, output uh, objects very quickly and, um, and cheaply, as cheap as possible. <clears throat> so, uh, the first thing that we, we uh, stumbled upon, maybe, maybe, maybe the first realization, was that we need uh, to have you rely on symbolism uh, to, uh, because the, the idea to use symbolic representation isn't new. Uh, once upon a time, all games uh, we played were uh, symbolic, like uh, Adam or, uh, or pretty, mu pretty much any uh, text-based game. Uh, even, uh, even when the games got uh, actual graphics, it was still symbolic. Uh, when playing, uh, when playing a shooter or anything in like, uh, it was, I think it was 240 uh, uh, by 360 resolution. We didn't actually see shit. It's, uh, it was our minds that created the whole scene and it looked awesome. Like uh, this, this, these are the rose tinted glasses uh, that we get uh, when we think about old games. Like they look great in our minds in our memories because uh, it was our heads that filled the void left by uh, deficiencies of, uh, of uh, rendering hardware and uh, hardware in general. So, you know, that, ooh, that, let's see if I can use the, oh yeah, yeah. So, so you know, stuff like that was, uh, uh, yeah, laser pointers are way better. Uh, so stuff like that was actual character, actual character running uh, in the dungeons, like lowercase r, r was uh, actual rat and stuff like that. And we, we saw this stuff. So that was something we wanted to leverage once again because uh, it, it fit our idea, not only because uh, it was cheap, uh, because uh, we offloaded uh, part of the work uh, um, into the users, uh, beholder's head, uh, but also because uh, it nicely corresponded with our goal to create uh, tributes to the games from the 90s. And um, so we knew the symbolism was the way to go. Um, yeah, and one, like our touchstone was uh, Lego bricks. And because Lego is, uh, it's, it's perfect. It was perfect medium for us. Uh, it fits everything. It's very symbolic. It's universal. You can um, you can have a Batman set and techniques and uh, mix them up with pirates, and it it still looks good. Uh, it, st it still makes sense. It's still uh, coherent. So uh, it's it's a perfect medium for stuff like that. But there are there were some issues like. There were already, already Lego, Lego games on the market, and the license would probably be a bit too expensive for us. So we uh, we just came to realization that this is something we should aim for, and uh, and uh, we should create something like that, but but ours and cheaper. Um, so uh, so with that in mind, we uh, we set out and we started looking for uh, for our own medium. And along the way, we experimented with some weird shit, uh, like uh, macaroni art. We actually, uh, we actually seriously considered that at some point uh, because it's uh, it's quirky. It's something new, so you know, like press would take interest probably. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, it, the medium is very separated from contents here because you can create anything, and it, like the medium is actually macaroni. Uh, these are not ours. Uh, no photos of our stuff survived. Uh, these are Sergei's uh, Pakhomov, who is super talented and does great stuff with macaroni. Uh, we imagined the production um, uh, like it was doable. We had a pipeline in mind uh, where we would glue macaroni, take photos, and do stop motion animation, uh, or maybe uh, work out a 3D pipeline for rendering uh, realistically looking macaroni and 
uh, going with that, uh, or maybe mixing both uh, physical photos and, uh, and 3D uh, stuff. Uh, was it a good idea? No, but it, it makes a good for a good story. So I'm glad we uh, explored this venue. Uh, one, um, one other thing we considered was claymation, uh, which, which is very cool and looks very good. And um, so the idea would be the, here that we would uh, create everything out of, um, out of uh, clay, yeah, out of clay, and uh, optionally uh, use uh, painted uh, paper backgrounds and, uh, well, and go with that. So um, again, it's a super flexible medium and uh, that we could bend and form uh, in, uh, at will to fit any style for any game we would like to create. Uh, and actually it was this extreme flexibility that we identify as, uh, identified as, um, as, a, as a biggest danger and challenge here because uh, with uh, you know unlimited flexibility come uh, comes unlimited temptation to actually take it too far uh, since it's super uh, high resolution medium we could create art sites well like we could create uh, uh, games in claymation that would uh, look nothing like uh, each other and uh, we would lose the the very thing we set out to do to have a coherent art style across the uh, game series like you you can imagine there are there are uh, movies using claymation that looks nothing like uh, um, like the other one so uh, like it's doable and uh, actually using claymation would make it more difficult for us to set uh, to create to define the art style so um, that and it also would be a production nightmare, uh, just like the macaroni, maybe even more. Uh, readability would also be an issue because with claymation you have uh, and the clay figurines, you generally um, they ha they tend to uh, become less and less readable the further you move away, uh, since they use the oh no, let's try this. Uh, uh, okay, you know there. They look very similar. <laughs> if you look at the outlines, they, um, like they are very easy to uh, distinguish at uh, this scale, but if you move uh, uh, much, much further, they will uh, start uh, gradually start blending with each other. Uh, it's, it's a problem with colors, but also with shapes and uh, in uh, how light uh, interacts with uh, clay in general. So, um, uh, so we uh, dropped that idea. Uh, somewhere along the way, uh, we also uh, we also experimented with uh, a lot of free freelancers, and we mm, well that was, that was actually our first uh, romance with uh, outsourcing the art style uh, because we outsourced a lot. Like we at this point we've been uh, three guys, all with uh, all of us engineers, and uh, we are not artists, so. Uh, this is something we uh, something uh, we actually outsourced, and we experimented with a lot of art styles. Uh, that was our uh, that was our um, uh, first attempt at dungeons, and this is our high quality Disney style cartoon. Uh, pastel colors, uh, easy on the eye, uh, looks nice. Uh, issues with that were that uh, it generally looks like a game for kids, so uh, which we didn't want. Uh, that, that was definitely something we wanted to avoid. Uh, it's, uh, it's rather expensive to produce such art. Uh, there is a lot of details, also a problem and a red flag for us. And it also, like, the scene begs for high uh, quality dynamic lighting to, that we couldn't do properly in uh, two dimensions in our engine. So, um, and it also has this distinct mobile feel uh, with, with the shading and, uh, and uh, cartoon style. So again, this is something we considered an issue because we didn't want uh, hardcore uh, PC gamers to, you know, uh, consider this game a mobile uh, port or something like that. Back then it was, it was an issue. There was this period when it's, it's still an issue, but back then players were very, very touchy about uh, mobile ports coming to Steam and stuff like that. And uh, here you can see uh, yet another attempt. Uh, even more, uh, even more uh, too niche with uh, distinct outlines this time. You can see that characters are like the, the dungeon is a bit more darker, and char characters are uh, have this, the, those uh, black outlines. Uh, again, 
Very nice. Uh, looks great. I would play that. Uh, it still has the, it still has the same issues as the previous one, and uh, it begs even more for very cool dynamic uh, lighting and uh, cool fluid uh, effects and stuff like that for uh, for spells. Something we desperately wanted to avoid, so we dropped that and. Um, after um, after at, at some point we came back to um, we came back to paper, uh, and when I say uh, came back to paper, it's because we that was one, one of our first ideas. Um, we uh, we initially considered paper, but we well we thought it was, it's um, overused and uh, it wouldn't work well for us. So we dropped it and we moved to stuff like macaroni and claymation. And uh, which, well, it seemed like a better idea back then and we wanted to explore all venues. And uh, as you can see here, uh, it's, uh, it's a test for a game, one of the games that are not yet announced, but uh, we, started, we were working on all our games back then uh, simultaneously to have, you know, coherent art style across the series. And at some point, someone dropped one of the buildings on top of, the, of a clipart book. And uh, that's, uh, this is one of the oldest, uh, oldest paper concepts from our uh, next wave of paper. And we thought that maybe it would work, you know. Um, it's, uh, uh, yeah, and in the end, paper won. So um, we we still have uh, had a lot of reservations uh, with paper because um, you know it's okay. Uh, so I guess uh, I'm on the next slide. Let's do this. Um, it was a recurring idea, as I said. Uh, it fits the books nicely, and um, because you know paper, and uh, we wanted our games uh, to. The name Book of Demons is not accidental. We wanted uh, our games to be um, to have this layer of abstra abstraction in uh, in name and uh, general uh, concept. So they were books in our library of uh, great games, stuff like that. So uh, there is a common launcher. We wanted to you know, cross sell the games with that and uh, like to bring new games to attention of uh, all the pl old players uh, who played uh, previous books. Uh, and we also wanted it to have a meta game and um, that would connect on the, on the games. And so the books uh, seemed natural, nat nat as a natural choice. Uh, the paper is patient. You can you know, put anything on it and it will work <laughs> somehow uh, for better or worse. And, uh, as I said before, it was a bit overused, so that was a problem. Um, and that, uh, at the time uh, we took the, took the screenshot, that was the first uh, page of Google results for paper character query. So um, it shows the, how long way we have to go, uh, travel from that point to actually have a defined uh, art style because paper character doesn't, and paper art style doesn't mean a sheet. It can still be, I don't know why, uh, Lego Batman is there, or maybe it's not Lego. No, it's not. Uh, at this angle, it looks like it's uh, it's a figurine. So, so we began experimentation with paper, and uh, and that included and started with collecting everything paper, like everything. We had um, we gathered pop-up books, uh, books on paper craft, uh, photos of stuff that we thought would be challenging to recreate in, in paper or uh, photos of stuff that were was made in paper and looked good. And uh, in this slide I should have, uh, I, I wanted to have a photo of our office but I was working from home and no one was at the office so uh, we have a lot of paper stuff and paper craft in our office like a lot of stuff, um, and very nice pop-up books. Um, so, um, yeah, and here you can see um, this is one of our uh, one of our uh, the cathedral scene. Uh, this is uh, there we had three pictures. I will come back to this. That we three scenes that we wanted to get right uh, to be sure that the art style will work uh, for the book of, for book of demons. Uh, we started with. Let's try this. Uh, this is su su super inconvenient. <laughs> so we started with uh, we started with um, a vector-like uh, graphic suggestive of paper uh, with uh, this that no that white outline that looks like it was printed on paper and cut out of paper with by someone with super shaky hands. 
and do those scissors, but still, uh, and that's that's the oldest uh, oldest. Uh, Experiment with uh, with this scene we have, and um, uh, yeah, and from that we move to um, town scene. As you can see here, this style is uh, much more refined. We have. Um, we already knew at this point that uh, super shaky uh, edges look look bad. Uh, it's still not very uh, coherent. Like some uh, buildings are flat, uh, like they were cut out from one piece of paper, and others uh, have open doors, and they look like uh, they have interior, so they're not. They look like they are three D, but then again, the edges suggest uh, that they are flat. Uh, that was our uh, our town scene, uh, which uh, which was the second uh, the second scene we wanted to uh, work well with uh, with the with the art style. One thing that is, uh, um, oh yeah, yeah, I will, already said that. Um, uh, yeah, and at this point we still didn't have a very uh, very. Uh, defined rules, what should be printed on paper and what should actually be cut out of paper. We started experimenting with physical models uh, and uh, uh, we created actual physical, okay, let's try this. Oh, yeah, we created actual physical models and tried uh, doing um, stop motion animations on them to check if uh, if they actually work and if do the uh, if they look nice and to see what makes paper look paper. Uh, so the idea was that we will go through from paper to actually uh, define set of rules that allow will allow us to create. Uh, Everything digitally, and it will still look like physical paper. Uh, and we did a lot, of a lot of experimentation like that. Oh, and you can see on uh, on the right there is a uh, very uh, very early design for a g yet another unannounced game. <laughs> it will probably change before uh, we created the game. A lot of our designs didn't age well. Uh, um, okay, so yeah, here is the here is uh, a photo of Matt Tube there, uh, right there, or one of the photos. So as you can see, uh, the paper edges are um, much wider. We also uh, at this point we were experimenting with uh, uh, hard angles and uh, maybe softer curves over here uh, to see what works well and um, and you can also see that the scene is already um, divided into three distinct planes because uh, the in the actual intro scene uh, for book of demons the camera moves through the scene uh, into the cathedral and uh, and then dives into the dungeons so we knew we will need some some way to create parallax and paper worked great for that uh, so yeah, so this, that was something we experimented with this. We with that we um, we knew the style was uh, good and it worked for us. At this point, we were pretty uh, sure that uh, this is something we want to explore uh, much further. And uh, from the production point of view, it was. Uh, it's very easy to create 3D scenes and 3D models and render them uh, to look like paper, especially uh, like paper uh, that looks like that with uh, uh, white edges, outlines, and stuff like that. So, uh, and we could, uh, like, it was natural to use this on sprites and 2D engine. So, um, that was something we, we were very excited about this art style at that point. Mm. Oh, did I already? Yes, I already said that. So uh, let's move on. Mm. Yeah, there were of course issues. Like the third scene we wanted to uh, to have pr uh, prototype uh, in our art style at this point uh, was our uh, isometric dungeon, and uh, white outlines with flat paper models don't really work well in uh, isometry. So uh, it didn't look good. It didn't look paper at all, and. Uh, it was a huge problem. So, um, 
Uh, and at this point, we knew that we would go with pop-up book uh, art style because uh, you know the town scene worked well with uh, with that, and uh, it's it's just something that uh, worked very well with the idea of game being a book. Uh, so uh, and in dungeons that that had a huge this huge potential for a pop-up scene uh, unfolding before the player, uh, which we eventually didn't do. Uh, but at this point, we were considering it. So. Mm, uh, as I said, this scene doesn't convey paper material in any way, um, and we knew we have to um, we have to work on that. Uh, we experimented with paper tabs that you can see are okay, were everywhere actually, but yeah, paper tabs like that. That's something you would see in uh, paper models, uh, tabs you would use to glue paper together, and um, uh, because you know paper tabs with uh, the, it might not be very easy to see. Uh, on this screen, but there are actually dotted lines on paper tabs that would indicate where you have to cut them out from paper and stuff like that. Uh, there, there were also uh, bent paper pieces with worn out edges uh, in the arcs over here and stuff like that. So the geometry we, at this point, I think it's, uh, no, I know, uh, this uh, prototype is uh, from May 2013. So we've been one year into the production, pre-production at this point, and this is, uh, this is what we had. So um, we knew we are moving in the right direction. There, are still, uh, there were still issues and a lot of issues. We were already one year into the production. We burned a lot of cash. Uh, we, we knew the style will work uh, in our pipeline because the characters were already created in uh, 3D and then rendered onto uh, to these sprites uh, with uh, 16, from 16 different directions. So they were, uh, they were able to uh, fluidly turn as they uh, walked through the dungeon because, um, oh, that's one other thing. Uh, at this point, we knew that if we are going to use this art style, we won't have any animations uh, because animated, uh, animated characters well there were several uh, sev several reasons for that uh, first of all the thin uh, thin cardboard animates poorly and at some point you, it will bend and twist and be perpendicular to the camera so it will uh, camera plane so it would disappear and uh, it's uh, this is something we wanted to avoid because you know Enemies should be easy to recognize at a glance. That should be very distinct. And uh, if you start animating skeletons like that, they, and you have few types of skeletons, at some angles they will start looking, they will be unreadable. You won't have an idea what you are looking at. So um, that was one reason. The second one is uh, that the lack of animations reinforces the mm, symbolic nature of, uh, of the visuals. Uh, our characters actually hop like pawns in the game, uh, pieces in the game. So um, they, they do have animations, they just, uh, they are not animated meshes. And the third reason is uh, animating everything is expensive, yo, and we, uh, we were on tight budget, so. Uh, you decide which reason was the most important here, but uh, uh, we knew we won't be animating them. Uh, we knew that we want them to uh, fluidly turn to convey the idea that we could have done that, and this is a coherent world where objects are actually in it and they don't, because, you know, uh, they were moving fluidly, they weren't hopping bef uh, between fields or teleporting or stuff like that, but if they were, uh, warping during turns that would break the, uh, the consistency of the world and uh, remind people that it's, well, it's just a computer game, not actual paper scene, which we didn't want. Uh, and this, this decision came with a whole set of issues because we had to, I will come back to that later, but we had to reassemble uh, sprites in our editor to actually allow for uh, animations like briefing yeah, I was skeletons brief for some reason, and uh, and stuff like that, and uh, and accommodate the turns, turning and uh, looking around and stuff like that. So um, yeah, the workflow was, was promising. We render prepared and created scenes in 3D, exported them to 2D, uh, cheap to make, readable. Uh, you can clearly disti distinguish uh, flying. Wild Hog, that's, that was the first version of it, from the skeletons and from the mage, even though the mage, yeah, there were issues, the mage looks like a porn actor from the 80s, but uh, that was the, f the first concept here. And um, there were issues, like what if we want to zoom in on something? And um, 
and uh, so uh, show something up close. This is that was the warrior concept, one of the early ones. And uh, our idea was to create uh, different versions with different uh, different level of detail for each uh, for each character and. Uh, uh, yeah, and that would be the warrior uh, when you are zoomed out. You have uh, this big head, it's easy to read. And that would be the warrior um, uh, in the town or maybe on the character selection screen. Um, yeah, that was something we uh, we considered. Um, of course, there were a lot of issues with this, which, which is why in the end we didn't do that. Like, the style would be very eclectic. Lego bricks don't change. Uh, they look depending on the view distance, and uh, we, there was no way to actually accommodate uh, this fluid, uh, uninterrupted, seamless zoom, because at some point we, we would have to change uh, level of detail and uh, jump from one, uh, one mesh to the other. And when I say mesh, I mean our uh, 2D mesh assembled in our editor. Um, we also experimented a lot with UI. Uh, as you can see, it can be done in paper, uh, and you can do it in many ways, like super, super wrong ways. Uh, like everything is uh, is terrible here. Uh, a very huge XP bar, which is not an important information. Very small uh, card, which are important, and every, well, it looks very bad. So yeah, this, but. It's it's the stuff I found in our uh, in our um, historical data directory. Um, okay, so uh, and that's the same. It's it all happened at the same time, of course. So we were. Uh, I will uh, guide you through um, uh, through uh, our cathedral concepts. Uh, that one you have already seen uh, with uneven cutouts. Uh, that one is uh, that was our experiment with paper cuts, uh, which we uh, adapted later. Where every edge on uh, the, the model is actually a three-dimensional uh, structure built out of cardboard, and uh, you can see that uh, not only outline but actual edges of. Yeah, I, I will I will get a stroke from using this thing. Uh, so. So you can see the edges are actual um, actual uh, cardboard that is worn out and uh, the, the, the paint is scratched. Um, uh, there, is a, there is an interesting approach to trees uh, over here uh, that are two-dimensional flat surfaces. Uh, the branches are flat and they look creepy. Uh, we like that. And it, uh, these trees actually made it to the final art style. Um, uh, here is yet, a, yet again an experiment. This is the more realistical approach where paper is lost, so we didn't like that one. And we, knew, you, we used that one as a, a test on for something we definitely don't want. Um, and uh, here is uh, yet another one, a more fairy tale approach with plain cardboard contrasted, uh, set against the painted textures. and. Yeah, there, there, there was some stuff we liked over here, like uh, it still retained our, yeah, our uh, cardboard edges. Also, the tree on the left, you can see there is, um, it uses blotches of color instead of uh, high resolution textures, and we love that because it, uh, it, it nicely corresponded with uh, and meshed with our idea of uh, symbolism and uh, you know, offloading the workload uh, to the player's head. So uh, this is, that, that was something we knew instantly that the blotches of color and uh, very symbolic textures is something we want uh, in our final style. Mm. So yeah, uh, the first one had a color scheme that we uh, that we liked. The second one had a distinct paper edges that we loved, uh, and uh, I think the second one also had uh, those nice trees. Uh, the third one showed us uh, what we didn't want, and uh, this one had those nice blotches of colors, and uh, it actually guided us uh, toward uh, less uh, detailed textures. Uh, so we took something from like it was a process. We took stuff uh, as we went. Uh, Forward, we started writing down uh, our uh, style definition document. Uh, it was at this point, it was like 20 pages probably. Uh, that's one image from the document, which um, uh, outlines how uh, 
uh, how you should apply the plain cardboard uh, to indicate that it's, uh, it's a textured cardboard that the character was cut out uh, of, and uh, how you should apply the worn uh, p uh, patches on the texture to in places where uh, the actual model would bend. Uh, which, in our opinion, reinforced uh, the impression of it being an actual uh, actual cardboard model. Mm. Uh, and yeah, and at this point, it it was somewhere uh, toward the end of uh, 2013, probably. And we knew that if we are going to work in the, at this pace, uh, it probably will be our kids or grandkids who finish the first game in the series because like we didn't do any real work at this point we were still working on document definition on the um, style definition document and stuff like that we like to over engineer things and plan productions and do stuff like that so uh, and we knew we won't be able to uh, to work without doing this so uh, we came up with an idea to uh, launch a competition uh, and uh, outsource the, uh, the art style at this point. We, we had some very good idea of uh, what we want, but we were not unable to work out the style by ourselves. So uh, sometime in the 2013, we decided to call for an outside help. Uh, we had uh, free games in the competition, like uh, we wanted uh, style defined for free games, uh, six mockups. Uh, the whole thing would took four months uh, because that was the maximum time we uh, we thought we can spend on this. Uh, with every iter oh, uh, and um, uh, over these four months, that would be four two week iterations, and uh, every iteration would end with a deliverable showing progress. Every iteration after the first one uh, would have to contain uh, in the de deliverable uh, all uh, mockups from all the games and all the scenes. Uh, like we we didn't want to have this uh, requirement for the first iteration because you know it's different studios have a different pace of onboarding teams and stuff like that and every iteration ended with uh, us decided deciding who stays on the show and who has to go and we were of course paying full price for uh, for uh, every iteration and so it was a series of contracts uh, with outsourcing uh, studios and um, Mm, yeah, and the idea was that uh, whoever won would get a contract for creating and defining the whole art style and uh, like a lot of more money. Uh, so yeah, and we, we at this point we started looking for um, oh yeah, and we write down, wrote down the definition document, which was 99 pages long. Uh, it was. Uh, it still is a huge document that is very useful, and I uh, highly recommend doing something like that because we still use it to onboard new artists. It's like uh, we don't have to say anything, we just give them the link to our 100 pages long document and they can read it and they should be onboarded. The idea was that once we start the production in fully, we will be able to, uh, oh shit, I'm running out of time. Uh, we will be able to use this to onboard uh, outsourcers as well. So it was a huge investment in that of time, but uh, the idea was well, it will pay up uh, later on. Okay, um, yeah. and. Uh, we actually gather, uh, found a lot of studios. Some were weird. Some wanted like hundreds of dollars for, per hour. Not this one. These two uh, for, of just chatting with us about this uh, this, this idea. Um, uh, and after a long search, we ended up with uh, two contenders: Super Genius and Virtuous. Uh, Super Genius is a uh, is a studio working. If, well, they do a very wide range of stuff. Uh, they work a lot with Marvel, and uh, so they were creating comics and uh, stuff uh, for them. And uh, Virtuous is a powerhouse from China that uh, has like, uh, but not only China, it has uh, thousands of employees, and because Super Genius is more like a boutique studio. And they have, uh, like they were uh, back in the heyday, uh, before pandemic and stuff, their uh, events, uh, internal events look like Metallica concert, like crazy stuff, you can Google it up. And um, yeah, and uh, what they got, uh, among other stuff, was our uh, mock-up uh, of Dungeon Scene, because we 
we wanted something to you know to compare and uh, they had to create the same scene so we could compare the details in them and uh, so we created the mock-up of um, how much green real estate we would like to um, assign to every object how the UI should look and they had to paint over this and uh, the, yeah and create the scene um, uh, that we could evaluate and uh, this is uh, yeah that's uh, that's virtuous uh, deliverable which um, which is uh, nice there's some clever ideas here. Uh, there is a lot of unreadable de details and stuff that's not clear at the first glance, which, which was a no-no for us. Uh, but there are some cool ideas like uh, that they added on their own, like uh, those um, strips of paper holding the sarcophagus closed. Uh, the entrance to the dungeon uh, is uh, different from what was uh, on the previous slide because you can see there are stairs and uh, here we have uh, some kind of grate. Uh, um, or bars or something like that, and you can see the stairs. Uh, so at this point, we knew that they won't stick uh, stick to our guides, of, uh, and uh, and that might be an issue. Um, this is the same the, the, the same scene, but from Super Genius. Again, uh, very cool ideas. Uh, it's way more readable. Uh, the paper. Um, uh, there are paper. Uh, oh yeah, and they added. Uh, then they added the paper uh, figures on uh, health and mana orbs, which is begged to be animated. So at this point, we knew we would want to animate this and the waves, uh, waves in the mana and stuff like that. Also, the hero is very interesting, and uh, you know we, we like that very much. Uh, the, there are bats, which might not be very clear from uh, where you see it, but here are bats that are super weird and not very readable and look like cow heads with bat wings but so not not all was great but uh, at this point but um, yeah but uh, both companies uh, delivered very um, both companies uh, delivered very cool art and uh, like you, what you've seen was just one scene we had a lot of scenes like that for different styles and different games and we wanted them to be coherent so uh, in the end super genius won and um, uh, because you know, we just felt that uh, the art direction was more coherent here, and um, yeah, you can uh, here you can see uh, they they very methodical methodical approach to uh, to stuff like uh, these are two skeletons from two different games in the series. Uh, this uh, that one on the right uh, is. Uh, uh, that one on the right is uh, what ended up being a skeleton in Book of Demons, and you can see that both are made of papers, of, of paper, but there is a different set of rules, uh, curves uh, of uh, and shapes of the material, how the, it's bent and uh, uh, how it's put together that uh, create distinct styles. So uh, that one is uh, is for. Uh, upcoming game uh, sometime in the future. And um, yeah, and we, we love their uh, very methodical approach, so we went with that. And, um, and they also deliver, we love that they delivered us very, um, very detailed explanations for everything uh, along the way. Uh, how stuff, uh, what was their thinking and the process uh, when designing things. So uh, it was very nice to working with them. This is their approach to the town scene, uh, or maybe it's ours. Mm, yeah, that's ours. That's our prototype, uh, and here is their uh, their version. Uh, as you can see, uh, some stuff is very, uh, very just an early concept. This is how we work with them. They uh, in stages to avoid uh, to avoid situation where they would do a lot of work just for, just for us to say, yeah, yeah, this sucks. Uh, just roll it back and go in a different direction. So characters came later, and as you can see, UI is also very uh, prototypy at this point, and uh, you know stuff just uh, the trees are. Yeah, you can tell, tell <laughs> uh, on this screen, but the trees are uh, almost uh, final quality uh, uh, in this uh, in this concept. So yeah, mm. and here is the final scene from the game, mm. almost final final scene uh, from the game. So as you can see, it came a long way, and uh, we got the in the end we got our very coherent uh, pop-up book style. Uh, it's universal. Uh, it works for different games. You, you have Sage on the left and um, uh, our 
plain, let's call it plain, from uh, upcoming book of variants that was a very old prototype, uh, visual prototype from uh, Super Genius. One of the scenes that were included in the contest, by the way. Mm. Yeah, and this is an example of how we can adjust the theme and mood uh, to different settings uh, op while operating within our visual style. You have this uh, green, dark, uh, rotting uh, autumn uh, scene uh, on the first tree, uh, more clean uh, sci-fi tree that uh, we would uh, gladly use in Book of Aliens, and uh, fairy tale, optimistic fantasy uh, style on the bottom. And they all use the same set of rules that we created for, uh, for our art style. So um, that was one of our tests, final tests, to see if, uh, if we should move forward with this style and uh, uh, if we would be able to adapt uh, further upcoming games to, um, to this. Uh, so how did it, did it work? Yeah, we have, uh, do we have time? Not really. Yeah, so uh, this is some technical stuff I wanted to throw in. Uh, this is uh, how uh, our texture for Warrior looks like. You can see that uh, every body part is actually rendered in 16 directions. And after that, we put, uh, put them together in our editor. That was uh, gruesome work. Uh, but that allowed us to create uh, characters that oh, uh, someone should probably click that, because this, this, should, be a, no, this should be a video. Let's see if it works. Uh, it won't. OK. Uh, OK, never mind. That was a cool GIF showing our character rotating and uh, exploding and uh, being uh, put back together to show you how uh, we were able to fake 3D uh, in 2D using this system. Uh, it's very cool, uh, trust me. And. Uh, and uh, yeah, actually, uh, most, most of our players actually thought the game is 3D, so we got a lot of feedback like, the camera should be lower, or guys, just, just lower the camera a few, a few degrees, and uh, it's, all, it's all fake uh, 3D into D. Actually, the only 3D part of the game, like using 3D transforms, is, uh, uh, is our town. And um, okay, I, I need the, the next slide, <laughs> and I cannot do this. Can someone uh, move the sh slideshow forward, guys? Yes, very nice. Thanks. Oh, yes. OK, so um, to wrap it up, uh, challenges ahead. We. Uh, well, we, we will be switching engines and moving to 3D. We heard that the future. Uh, so uh, we will have to translate our style to 3D. This is something we, we didn't plan ahead to. We have the, we have the pipeline to create uh, models in 3D, but uh, actually moving the, the engine into 3D allows us to, uh, for uh, uh, you know, actual, not fake uh, lighting effects and uh, cooler visuals and post-processing and stuff like that. So we'll have to accommodate that in our style. Uh, we are already making headway in this department. So as you can see, we have uh, scenes and prototypes that looks uh, papery and uh, we had to uh, switch from our cool uh, flat trees to 3D trees. And um, so yeah, future looks bright, I guess. We will, uh, I hope we'll be able, we will be able to adapt this to 3D nicely. And yeah, that's the end. Thank you. Uh, do you have any questions? Awesome.